A Moment with Tyranny podcast. This episode in conversation is powered by Homes with Tyranny. Hey, 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 it is another Moment with Tyranny podcast and we're here with my guest Eric again. We are going to talk today on procrastination, procrastinating. Um, We just kind of got into a conversation and I'm like, you know what, this is something that we all need to talk about and we can hear because, you know, there's a lot of procrastination going on. So, hey, Eric. Hello, hello, hello. Glad to be back. Uh, We're glad to have you on the Mom with Tyranny podcast. So let's jump on into it and let's talk about procrastinating or procrastination. Uh, Just let's get started about it. Let's talk about it. Sure. So procrastination and procrastinating. A lot of people do it um, and they don't realize they do it. Uh, People are full of excuses when it comes to procrastinating. And um, I I guess I can just say they make a lot of excuses to why they don't do things or why they don't start things. And to me, you know, it's a little irritating and it irritates some people, but some people really feel that they need to take the time and do something. So what is your opinion of uh, procrastination? What is it really? Well, I, I think, again, so I try to I try to take a look at what, what people think about procrastination. But I think procrastination at the end of the day is something our mind tries to protect us from something that we are, we we perceive to be scary mm. you know so, so like like I, I was going to give an example of like starting writing say you want to write a book mm-hmm. so people procrastinate doing that because they 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 pass the mind perceive they perceive that as scary so their mind perceives it as scary so they look for all excuses not to start writing mm. so you believe that people may procrastinate from fear so basically they're not doing something or they don't move on something because maybe they're afraid of failure or they, so they procrastinate and never started or they're afraid of what? Uh, yeah. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid. They're afraid they it won't come out as well as they want it to be. They're, they're afraid that their high standards will not, will, they will not be able to match the high standards they have for themselves in their heads. So yeah, it's, 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 you perceive you're going to fail in one way or the other. So also can procrastination also be that people may just be lazy too, you know, some, some people don't do things because if they feel that they don't do it, somebody else will do it, you know, that that, that could be, but when, when you really look at procrastination, it's, I don't think you can call it being lazy Mm -hmm. because procrastinators will be, they'll be very busy doing something else they enjoy. Mm. You know, they'll they'll play video games all day, but they can't sit down and take a video or something else, you know. So sometimes it's not always laziness. It's sometimes it's, it's more avoiding something that you need to do when it needs to be done. But yes, there are also some people who are just lazy. And yeah. and I, I don't think lazy people are procrastinating, but they, they can actually just be lazy. They want somebody to do the work. But, you know, procrastinating, you know, or delaying to do things, you know, sometimes things need to be, delayed and i do believe that you know sometimes uh god delays things because he knows that it's not time to move on it but there's sometimes when we delay things and it hurts us because procrastination can be hurtful it can cause you not to it can cause you to miss out on something that you really needed to do and then you always have to end up playing catch up when you procrastinate if you just do something and get it out the way, then you are opened up to get more stuff done, or you you have more time to uh, move on to something else and grow. But if you procrastinate uh, more times than less, you end out you end up missing out on something. And that's very very true. And procrastinating more than not is going to hurt you anyway. But people still do it. So, and and that's one of my things. I mean, I have um. I have, I know someone that is always saying that they're going to do something, they're going to do something and they never do it. 
And um, there's a lot of people I know that will say, oh, we need to do this. And they never do it. So then I end up moving on it and getting it done. And then they come in and where it's, oh, we did this. It's not a we, I did. You know, they'll come up with an idea, but they never move on it. And that becomes frustrating to the other person. If you're working with a team of people and things need to be done as a team or something like that, it's important for you not to have a procrastinator there because if you have a procrastinator there, then either someone is going to do more than their share or something's not going to get done that could, could you know, cause it something not to work or something to fail or, you know, something happens. You have to do some overtime. You have to do something because someone is procrastinating and not doing what they need to do. And that's really frustrating to me. I feel like if we are working as a team and there's things that need to be done, we need to equally work at the same pace or at least be working, okay? Because some people <laughs> move a little faster than others, but there's some people say, okay, well, I'm researching and I'll get there. But you have deadlines, you have things you need to meet. And when you procrastinate, sometimes people procrastinate intentionally. And I do believe that. Yeah, but, and that's what I'm saying. But when they procrastinate intentionally, that's what procrastinating, they're just lazy, which is different. Mm. Mm. I, I look at it, it's, it's completely different. When they, when they do it intentionally, I look at it as being, I, it's more being lazy than anything else. Mm. Well, let me, let, me, let me come back to that. So let me give an example. Let's say you have a project at work. You have a week to do your project. Mm-hmm. The, the smart thing says start it today, get it finished with, get it done over, get it over with. Mm -hmm. But let's say you've done 10 such projects and you understand that you can start today, but mm, I'll start tomorrow. Mm. Oh, I'll start, I'll start in the middle of the week because I, I'm confident I'll get it done in three days. So. And if you've been doing this, if you've done 10 projects and all of them, you didn't never set them on day one. Now, what kind of procrastination? How would we call that? I guess. That's procrastination. You should have said day one anyway, but you knew you're going to get it done by the deadline. Yeah, but if you but here's the thing is that if you started at day one, if you ran into anything, any problems, then you know that you know you had time to fix it. If you wait until day three to start. And then you run into a problem that may take you a full day to get fixed. Now you are at a do or die time frame where you got to now stay up all night or you got to really work hard or you got to push. And now you put stress on yourself to meet a deadline. And, 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 and therein lies the issue right there. So some, sometimes people do that because so far I've done 10, 10 projects. They all worked when I worked in day three. Then the 11th project is when I should have really started day one. So yeah, you're right. It, you, st you put stress upon yourself for no good reason. And if you're working- but people if, still do it. Yeah, but if you're working with a team, here's the thing is if, if I'm doing my piece and I can't move on until you do your pay piece, now I'm sitting waiting for you to get your piece done on day three. Now we run into a situation. Now we're both on hold for four days because you decided to wait. That's why I said procrastinating- it doesn't just affect you if you're on a team. Now, if it's you and you just decide that you're going to procrastinate and you miss deadlines, that's one thing, okay? But you still got to look at the whole picture. And that kind of reminds me, there's a commercial that comes on and the guy is talking and he's like, are you one of those people that rides around until your light on your gas hand turns yellow? Or if you have a project that's due on Monday, you do, you do it on Monday. Monday. You know, yep. I laugh about that, but you know, he even says you could be putting money in somebody else's pocket. You know, that that's a message there that you have to think about. You know, if if you if something is needs to be done, then do it. Remove fear. I hear you saying procrastination is a type of fear. And I and I it can is see all about that. fear. Yeah, and I can see that people are very afraid of moving because A, they don't want to fail or B, if they, or another, if, if I'm going to lose some money, what am I going to do if I lose money? But you got to look at it at another way. What if you make money? You know, what if you don't fail? What if you do succeed? Now you have postponed your reward because you've pro procrastinated on it. You never know what you're going to, what's going to happen until you do it, right? And that right there is 
And again, in the easiest way to solve procrastination, if you ask me, is action. It's action. It's action. Yeah. It's just action. Because the fear that what do what do what you fear. Anytime you have a fear of something, mm -hmm. that's your mind telling you that's what you really need to be doing. Mm. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and we've had a podcast talking about fear and it's like, when you were afraid of something, we're worried about something or we're fearing something that more than likely is not going to happen. Or is like 10% likely to happen, something like that, you know, because if you've educated yourself enough or you've done enough research, then just get out there and do it because more than likely either you're going to learn from it or you're going to succeed in it. Right. That's true. And also the, the longer it also, the longer you hold on to doing something, mm -hmm. the more fearsome it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. But, so but again, I, it, yep. no, I'm sorry. Go it ahead. Boils, no, I'm going to say it boils again. It boils down to action. Yeah. I agree. Action, action and action means moving. Action doesn't mean sitting there saying, I'm going to, I'm going to. That's you not action. That's talking. No. <laughs> That's talking. <laughs> And you know what, and, and, and with me and my mom says, and I, and I, I appreciate her and even you and other people, um, but my mom always tells me that I'm a mover and a shaker. If I say I'm going to do something, then I, I get it. I, I put it in motion. I really, I start moving. I start moving. And one thing I've learned about putting things in motion is that you can't depend on everyone to move with you. So if there's something that you really want to do and you really want to get done, you're going to have to make sure that it's something that you can do on your own as well. Now, it's great to have somebody to come and help you. And sometimes you have to ask for help for some things. But if it's something that you know wants to be done, go ahead and do it. Start the ball to moving. Go, go, go. Get that, that wheel to rolling. Because if you're waiting for somebody before you start rolling, you may never roll. And I learned that a long time ago. So whenever I see something that I want to do, I'm like, ah, I'm going to do it. And, and, you, and you know, I'll say, I'm going to go and do this. And next thing you know, I done paid for it and I'm doing it. You know? Yeah. I, I, Again, I, like, you're, like you're saying, it's just action, you know? Yep. What, whatever it is. Eat the frog. If you have to eat 30 frogs in 30 days, start your morning, eat it in the morning. You've yeah. done your worst thing, your day can get better from there. Whatever it is that you hear, go ahead and just do it. Yeah, yeah. And I hear other people say, I want to get started, but I don't have time. We have as much time as we want to make. Yeah. Again, you can't tell me you don't have time unless you're telling me you don't watch TV, you don't do Facebook, you're not on Instagram. If you can, you can show me that you do none of those. Yeah. Then yes, I may believe you have no time, but if you have time to watch TV, if you have time to sit back and just relax, you have time. It's just, it's not important to you. Yeah. And there you have it. And that's a good thing when people, <clears throat> a takeaway, if you say, I don't ever have time, then you, have, you need to prioritize your day. Stop and look, what are you doing? If you're spending two hours taking a nap in the day, and then you spend 30 to 30 minutes to an hour on in on social media. And then you spend another hour of your day watching a, a, a show on television, you know, real housewives of some place. Yeah, exactly. One of those, those things. And then you spend another hour and a half at the bar, uh, drinking and socializing. And I'm not saying that you don't need that in your life, but I'm just saying, you need to prioritize. And like you just said, how much do you want something? That is the real big thing. If you are, are, are wanting to do something and you're procrastinating, then maybe you really don't want it because if you really want it, you're going to make it happen. So I like what you said about how bad do you want it? How much do you want it? Yeah. I see. Again, and that's why it boils down to how important is it to you? Cause like, again, think about it, uh, snoozing your alarm clock in the morning. Yeah. Some people do that endlessly. Yeah. I, I, I actually, I was one of the people who used to, I used to snooze a lot of time, but nowadays I just said, you know what? I need to wake up because I have stuff to do. Yeah. It's important for me to wake up. So as soon as my alarm clock goes off, boom, I'm up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, again, 
it's that you have to make the decision. Is it important? Right. Right. Yeah. I hear people say a action, action, action. Yeah, I hear people say, I, I, I want, I need to exercise and I need to walk, but I don't have time to, and I don't know where I can do it. And right there, you snooze the clock or you come home and you sit down and you watch TV. Well, slip it in there somewhere. Don't snooze the right clock. Now, yeah. Instead of snoozing, get up and do yourself about 10 to 15 minutes of exercise. And when you come home, pull out the treadmill or get on the, the floor instead of turning on the TV, you know, do you some exercise. But even with the TV on, when you're trying to exercise, you can do that with it on. So it goes yeah, back yeah. to how do you fit it into your schedule? I'm a big person. I'm a big, 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 big on time blocking. And those are the kind of things that you put on your time block and your no, your non-negotiable time. When if, again, like you said, if you're really serious about it, but stop talking about it if you're not serious about it. You know, that's yeah. That's, or, or, or also, you can just you can you can break it down into small. Again, if you break it down, if you break some things down into smaller steps or mm -hmm. make it smaller, it it gets easier to fit in to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you're, like you're talking about exercise. So the doctor says you have to exercise 30, day, 30 minutes a day. Well, apparently you can't find 30 minutes. But yeah. then you find five minutes. Exercise for five minutes every day. Yeah. Once once you get into the habit of exercising every day, you'll find out, oh, wait a moment, I'll, I'll take 10 minutes today. It now becomes a habit. So again, you can start small, work your way, work your way up on some things. Yeah. Yeah. So again, there are just there are many tricks you can use on self to help you get over procrastination. Yes, yes. So it's just a moment of tyranny. We're just kind of throw a little thing out there for us to think about every week. Um, what would be something or a takeaway that you could say to our audience, those people that struggle with procrastination or really hadn't identified that they're procrastinating? What is something that we can leave them with? I would say that the thing to really think about is you have to make a decision. You have to take action. Mm -hmm. You have to decide, and especially if it's something you're afraid of, decide to do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't do it, if you have, if you have, if you have a fear of failure, if you don't do it, you already fail. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. If you've never, if you don't do it, you've already failed. Yeah. So you might as well do it and fail for real. Yeah. But failure is good. I always say fail forward, you know? Yeah. And do you, more often than not, you're going to learn something from it. So Exactly. And 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 that's what, and, and I would say, agree with you and what you're saying. And I, and my thing is first look at what's going on. If you're always making an excuse, if you always find yourself using words like, I don't have time, or I can't, or, or I'll get to it. Those are kind of key words that maybe you might be a procrastinator, you know, if you're not, if you're not completing tasks to the end and you have an excuse for it every time, you may be a procrastinator. So you need to step back and first we got to reflect on ourselves and see why are we not moving ahead? Why are we not getting things done? And is it something that is within our control? And then at that point, I go back to what you say. We need to, if we are doing those things, why ask ourselves, why am I not finishing these things? Is it because I'm afraid to? Is it because I'm afraid I'm going to fail? Then we need to get ourselves over those hills and mountains too. And I always say, take the big leap. I mean, and, you, and you've even said, you know what? If you get out there and you lose the money, you can make it back. Yep. You know? Yeah, uh, and another, and and if you get out there, it's not that it's not. I, I don't look at a failure as a negative. Look at it as as a, as as a lesson because you will learn, which means the next time you do it, you're not going to do that again. So then that moves it, you a little it, bit further it, it, to your yeah, it moves you further exactly. To your you know what not to do. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's what we're talking about. And uh, procrastinate, thank you so much for joining me with A Moment with Tyranny. And everyone knows that I have to leave you with a quote for today. And our quote for today is, never do tomorrow what you can do today. Procrastination is the thief of time.
that's by Charles Dickens. So I kind of like that one. So I'll say it one more time. Never do tomorrow what you can do today. Procrastination is the thief of time. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining me with the Moment with Tyranny podcast. If you're not subscribed, everyone click that like button, share, subscribe, and we will be back next week. I'm here every Friday with a Moment with Tyranny podcast and talking about some good topics, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you, Eric, for joining us. Thank you for having me. I, I had a blast. Thank you.